Hey everyone, it's Barry here. Welcome to My Virgin Kitchen. I hope you are well. Today we are testing some more kitchen gadgets. There's Ray. There's Ray. So as usual, if you've missed any of the kitchen gadget videos to date, there is a link to a playlist up here and down below in the description so you can have a bit of a marathon and watch them all from the beginning and chuckle away because you guys enjoy this pretty much as much as I do. As always, uh, please consider before commenting down below that some of these things could actually help people with disabilities. I think you're gonna enjoy the ones we've got today. There's one in particular uh, on recent videos, you've been like, Barry, why have you got uh, like a frying pan on your sofa? And uh, it was basically a gadget that arrived. I don't keep my frying pans there. It was this copper non-stick pan thing, which we'll test at the end. Really popular at the moment, this thing. Ah. Also, um, I was gonna do some retests today off the back of the last gadget video, particularly the uh, peanut butter gadget. We're gonna do it again, but I was excited for these today, including this first one, uh, which is from Lakeland, quite a very well-known brand here in the UK. They do lots and lots of uh, kitchen gadgets and appliances and stuff. This is quite simply, well, I looked at it like that, I wasn't sure, it looked maybe something oriental, but it's actually a cake divider. Divide your cake into six, eight, 10, or 14 equal pieces. Or if you're very hungry and you don't want to share your cake, you don't need this at all, you just, ah, you eat like a pirate, Arr. So use align both knife markers with the imprinted pink line, uh, set the divider to the number of pieces, so it's got numbers on it. Insert the divider into the center of the cake to cut the first slice, blah, 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 Just do it. So I thought I'd go for a cake that represents modern day social media. Uh, an emoji cake, yay. Arr. Is that the smiley fun? Oh no, he's a smiley one. I thought it was the awkward face. Ching. This is the official emoji brand celebration cake. Sponge laid with raspberry, oh yeah. The kids are gonna love it because they're gonna get home later and be like, yeah, cake. Okay. Take this out, look at that. Oh, it's falling off. That is the gadget. It's, uh, yeah, it's got, if you join it like that, it's a white bit and a pink red bit. I might see it as red, in the words of Mrs. Barry, but you might see it as blue. Uh, and there are numbers here, six, eight, 10, and 14, depending on the number of slices. So I guess we just sort of rotate these like that. Oh, I think it's a bit broken. So there is like a, a indent in there. We need to line that up. Nice. Set the divider to the number of pieces you would like by moving the white marker. Okay, so we've got numbers on it and then we move the uh, white marker. Come on now. It's actually the pink one, I think. So what we do is push it to six. So it's gonna be nice big chunky pieces, eight, 10, 14. Okay, nice. Let's go for six, that's pretty big slices. Insert the divider into the center of the cake to cut the first slice. Insert a knife in between each of the two edges of the white and pink markers, edge markers, okay. Yeah, so the knife is gonna go in these gaps. <laughs> it's like a little Pikachu thing. So you just gotta make sure you get it in the cake fairly central. So in that goes, nice. So we slice down. There. And then we use the pink one there, okay. This is weird because I've only cut it to there at the moment. And then we just rotate it. And then slice again. Right through his teeth. Actually, is an emoji male or female? These are like generic yellow blobs, aren't they? And hopefully, if my maths is correct, boom. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Can you see the lines? That's really evenly cut. And now he looks like he's got a red nose. <laughs> Put it out. <laughs> We've made it, there you go. Isn't that the most best upgrade on an emoji you've ever seen? Uh, so what it's done though, it has, it's only cut it to there because the circle thing gets in the way. Uh, so we can use these guidelines-ish to just go straight through like that. All right, I'm a little bit out. <laughs> but, oh, there we go. That's worked absolutely, that has worked really, really well. Check that out. So if you're a parent like me and you want to set it onto 14 and buy the cheapest cake you can just to satisfy all the kids at your birthday party because it's so expensive. This is actually a really, really cool gadget. Just brush my teeth, tastes like mint. As you guys know, I'm just about to move into a studio and I have decided I am now gonna to switch to doing gadget of the week. So that means I can spend more time on a particular gadget. And you know when you see these as seen on TV adverts where it's like, they go all black and white. Are you tired of the same old pen? I'm gonna have some fun like that with some reviews in it, get some friends to do voiceovers uh, and I'm excited by it. So it just gives me that chance to prepare a little bit more. Whereas at the moment I have to rush and shoot for like two hours while the light is good in my kitchen. So I'm excited about that and hopefully you will be too. Next gadget. I know nobody likes change on YouTube, so I will every now and then still do like the bunch together ones, just for 
compromise, all right? This next gadget kind of wants to fall apart. Um, I just took one of the fasteners off, but just it's jumping out, it's like, use me. Uh, it's been in the loft of my house for ages, along with many other gadgets that I'm working my way through. Um, I can't see what it's called. Oh, here we go. Press our gooms. That sounds very West Country where I'm from. Uh, what do you do on the weekend, mate? Oh, we press our gooms. A two-in-one funnel citrus fruit squeezer from Easy Make. Uh, so basically, it's a funnel and a squeezer. So. Oh, it looks kind of like an ice cream. <laughs> Let's get it out. Yeah, so basically it's got a big bottle on the front there so you can squeeze lemon juice via the funnel uh, straight into a bottle, or in my case, a glass. Oh, just while I remember, the lens that I'm using right now is the one that I've borrowed. It's not quite as good as the last one because it broke on the last gadget video. Um, I sent it off to my Nigerian long lost relative who said that he owed me $10 million, but if I could just send him uh, the lens for now as a deposit, then I'd get it back, so. See what happens. Well, when I first saw this in a shop, um, I thought, so there's a little thing there, there was like an Olympic torch where you could just squeeze oranges, um, which, you, which you still can. It's got a little pip catcher, but it's all about the, the, the funnel technology. I just quite like the idea of just like being able to squeeze lemons in my hand and oranges. Oranges and lemons, said the da 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 da. I hope I'm not the only one that does that with pretty much every song. Got me living so crazy right now. All the times in the... I pretty much do that with every song. You get the chorus and then you're like... <laughs> Slicing up me lemon. Slicing up me orange. So, just a very simple funnel, okay? I'm going on a stag weekend this weekend. I might take this with me. It could be a good prank tool. It goes in there. Orange. Lemon. We then press our gooms. Uh, we get the lid thing. Stick it. Ah, oh, there we go. It's now locked in, folks. We're gonna lock that answer in. <laughs> Squeeze the lemon. Try not to get it in your eye. And there is. Oh, look at that. It's coming out there. It's a bit, it's a bit unstable. Probably need to hold it with my other hand. But look, there is lemon juice. This is the kind of video now, if I had a newborn baby to hand, which I don't often, sometimes I do, um, I'd like get it to drink the lemon juice. So I'll play the role of the baby. Pretty much the story of my life. And now an orange. Look at that juice coming out of that funnel like that. That is great. That is really cool. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed though, because I really did want it to be like something where you could just walk along and carry it, but there you go. And of course, the cool thing is it has actually caught a little uh, pip there, which is nice. But I think it served its purpose. <clears throat> That's nice. That's really nice. Conclusion though. Oh. Conclusion though, it does work. So if you were making some sort of bottled juice, you wanted to store the juice from an orange or lemon, or a lime, and then you said potato then, it'd be fine. This gadget I'm kind of intrigued about and also slightly worried about. Uh, it looks like a mini guillotine. It's basically the French style bean slicer made in Australia by Crisk. Hi, I'm Crisk. <laughs> Why does it remind me of a character from an Australian say, hi, I'm Chris Daniels, I'm a, I'm a surgeon. Uh, Sorry, I love Australians. I love everyone. It's just stereotypes like me. Oh, your English cup of tea. Mmm, the queen. A fillet du thé français. Strings and slices in one easy action. Okay, so it's gonna, it's gonna do stuff. All right. Warning: very sharp blades. Open and use with care. Read instructions before use. Never place fingers near blades. Good life advice, generally. To be fair, this does look blooming sharp. Wow, look at that thing. That is crazy. See that? All right, so there's a very nasty looking blade there. There's a blade on the side, and there's like a row of blades in there. I'm really nervous. Do you know what? I haven't got the right type of beans. They need to be fat to fit through that hole, and the only ones they had this morning, it must have been, everyone must have rushed out and bought that gadget, um, needs to go through this. Well, let's still try it anyway. Um, so apparently, you can, there's the tail, Use this blade to cut off the top and the tail of the bean. So is it just that sharp that you can just go, oh my gosh, that is a sharp blade. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't get this, some blades here as well, but it's not really showing me what to do with those. I've got thin ones. Oh, that is so sharp. I've just done another one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick two in at the same time through this. Oh my gosh. So you pull it through like that and then, 
Oh, well, yes, it's, look at that. It's actually worked. It is really sharp and dangerous. Oh, let's do loads, shall we? Oh, so, so sharp, guys. I shouldn't do stuff like this unsupervised. So we're gonna bunch it together as four. I'm gonna push this so it opens up and lets me stick more in. And that's then gonna clasp it, okay. So it's got like plural, multiple amounts of beans in it. So we'll call it a colony. I'm gonna push it through. Oh. I'm really worried I'm gonna slice my finger here. Oh. And when you get a substantial way through, oh. <clears throat> come on. You, you, then, you then pull. Yeah, that didn't work so well. Do it in little batches or the, you know the big fat green beans you get? Use those instead. So I did it with fine ones, but look, it's actually worked a charm. It's just very, very, very dangerous. It's like one of those medieval finger traps. You don't want to get your finger in there. Part-time bean cutter, part-time torture device. Look, what's that guys? Interested? You like the look of that? It's cool, right? Just thought I'd bring some normality back into it. Pugs from all of that scary knife stuff. Ooh, green bean. So this gadget derives from one of my most favorite uh, gadget companies that I've discovered on this journey so far. This is the Mini Sapoon, which is an amazing name for a dog. Come on, Sapoon. I should have called you guys Sapoon. Yep. Basically, it's by a company called Dream Farm and they make some really cool gadgets so far. They tend to be all like silicony and bendy and quirky, which is essentially what this is. Uh, this being called the Mini one, I imagine they do a larger one. So it's marketed as measuring, scraping a jar clean and sitting up on your bench. Scrape out every last piece of food from your jar or bowl with the flat silicone scraping tip and flexible soon splats. <laughs> Keep benches and counters clean and food hygienic thanks to the unique handle design which sits in your spoon up off of your bench. Wow, it's heat resistant up to 260 degrees. That's pretty cool. Ah, and there it is. Like the new iPhone. Look at that packaging. Kind of looks like a posh version of that one that I had. Remember the one that was like a tongue spoon? Urgh. Except this actually does something. So this is a perfect teaspoon in there, apparently. Let's test that. So that is a, a teaspoon of sugar. And hopefully, we pour it in our spoon, level it off. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much fine. So we can now confirm by high-tech testing technologies, even though a little bit of sugar fell off the side, that that is a teaspoon. Next test, does it sit on the counter? Yes, it does. But the thing that it markets itself as is to scrape every nook and cranny from a jar. And I've got some Nutella. <laughs> well, I've actually got two uh, tubs of Nutella. Let's find the most em Why have we got two? About the same, actually. So that you can see this in action a little bit more, I'm going to peel off the label. Well, as best I can. Well, I'm going to soak it and scrub it off. Hang on. I removed the label, well, most of it anyway. Uh, I've just made me realize how bizarre Nutella looks when you take the label off it. It's just generic brown mud in a jar. Uh, you can see where we've hacked away at it previously with just a standard spoon. It's, it's scraped the sides, but with the spoon, maybe we'll get a difference. For those of you that don't know, you can actually warm Nutella up in a saucepan of water with a lid on or in a microwave and it'll just pour out anyway. But anyhow, uh, we put the spoon in and we can just scrape. Oh my gosh, did you see that? That wipe. Mmm. Well, Nutella's good, but look, let's try and get another one. <laughs> it's like a windscreen wiper. Here we go. Look at that. If I go to the other side, <laughs> if you go to the other side, like, you can pretty much see through a Nutella jar, which I've never, ever managed to do before. Mm. Go on, son. Look at that. Amazing. That is really cool. Now fed up with Nutella as well. Our second to last gadget is called the... Cataract, uh, which sounds like some sort of medical condition for old people. Um, oh, that's cataract, isn't it? Get my cataracts done. Uh, this is a medieval looking uh, sausage hot dog thing that you roll over. Uh, I think it was, someone did actually tell me to get this and I'm sorry I forgot who you were. Um, but the slot dog was a gadget where I pressed down on the hot dog, rolled it over, pressed down again on a previous gadget video. I don't know, go find it. And uh, it made the hot dog cook quicker with the gaps. It sort of made it just all open up and stuff. So this is basically a similar thing, but we're gonna roll this thing. You see that? It's quite scary looking. And we're gonna roll that over the hot dog, ideally to barbecue it, but we'll just do it in a pan. And there are no English instructions at all. Well, there might be. This device was developed and made only for cut in the skin of sausages with a firm peel at temperatures between five degrees, that's specific. 
got to cut it at certain temperatures. At the same time, this device and the goods that you cut shall be guided by hand only. I'm not going to use my head, am I? Put a sausage down. Now put the carrot into your hand and set it at one end of the sausage and press strongly onto the sausage. You will feel and hear how the device is cutting into the peel. <laughs> Keep this pressure constant and first now you roll along the sausage. If needed, hold the sausage thereby with your other hand until the device has made the first cuts. Be careful not to cut yourself. If, it, if the cuts aren't deep enough, you've not pressed it strong enough. Another possible cause may be to a small diameter of the sausage. It's all very sausage, isn't it? Oh, right. Well, that is nowhere near like what I was expecting. Look, look on there, that looks all like horrible and metallic, Mad Maxi, you know, like quite gruesome. I mean, you look at this. It's plastic. That's plastic, but this, yeah, they're sharp, they're sharp. So what we do is we roll it. Is that gonna roll? Yeah, okay. So the inner thing's gonna roll. Oh, that's sharp. So we need to press it into there quite deep because that way it will then give it the ability to roll. If we don't, it will just go. Can you see how that's not actually moving? It's the inner wheel that needs to move. Hot dog. Smells all right. All right. And then we roll along. I'm pressing deep. I think it's working. <gasps> you see that? Look, it's made, it's made incisions in it and they are quite deep. This is basically what the slot dog did, but it's more fun because it's on a wheel. Yeah. So let's be crazy and let's do all four sides. I don't think you're supposed to. <laughs> yes. So we have got now a really spiralized sausage, which should, as it cooks, maybe open up, at least help it cook quicker. Let's find out. Let's find out, but let's find out using our final gadget, which is a Sermolon. Sounds like something from Transformers, right? Uh, Non-stick pan. These are like copper coated. You see videos of this online all the time. And this is one of the one reasons I wanted to do like gadget of the week, because I could literally hammer this pan and have so much fun with it. I mean, even in one of the videos, they say how it's scratch proof. They've got a lady scraping it with a fork and there's no way I'm going to do that. Please don't be like nails down a blackboard. Oh, not too bad. I'm only doing it once, but no fork marks. No Wolverine has been here. But I'm serious, this is a, supposed to be a super non-stick pan. I think the one that I got, well, not only did it arrive, but it's like tiny. Um, I don't know if I can put this handle in the oven. Other ones you can, you can like make some more pies in it. You can do monkey bread and all that stuff in the oven. We're just gonna use it on the grill top, uh, but they were doing crazy stuff. They were like putting like plastic cups in it and melting it, which is what I'm gonna do, but we're gonna start with a fried egg. All right, down there. I have given it a very quick wash, but we are going to get it quite warm. Wow, that's hot already. We'll start with the egg. In the video, by the time they cooked it, they were spinning it round. It was like a plastic egg. That made a really weird sound. I've got to say though, the heat coming off that thing is crazy. I'll just use this board to put the egg down if it works, but... A bit of seasoning, why not? The suspense is killing me. I'm actually quite hopeful about this. Oh, like someone just shot it. All right, I'm gonna turn the flame off, but the residual heat is still there. Let's, um... Come on. <gasps> I don't think it's worked. Oh my gosh, look, no. <laughs> it's not worked at all. Look. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Uh... Yeah. But look, it is actually, uh, no. It has actually burnt the bottom of it as well. I'm gonna wash it and we'll try it again with a hot dog. Just to confirm, that was a fried egg, clean pan, no oil, just like it said in the adverts, and it didn't work. So I've cleaned it out again, nice and dry. Start to warm up again, and we'll sit in our hot dog. Not too bothered about it getting hot, we'll just push it around. Fought so far, it's not very excellent. Definitely gets really hot though, I'll give it that. I guess the good news is this gadget's working because it is actually opening you know, the sausage as it cooks. And this is feeling now really, like, that's nice and wide, look at that. Um, it is feeling really non-stick now, that is really sliding around. Wee! Yeah, look at that, that's great. And to be fair, if you put this in a normal pan and you didn't put oil in, some of the skin could peel off, but that isn't actually happening. Oh yeah. So I'm not going to say I hate this pan. I hate it. Um, it's working. It's cooking. It's doing its job. Um, 
It's just weird to not use any oil. All right, conclusion, sausage works. Hot doggity dog, hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. All right, so we might as well keep this pan hot. We've got two more to do. One is food, one is quite dangerous, but hey-ho. Uh, now salmon is quite notorious in that you get the skin uh, on the back like that, which can stick to pans quite a lot. Uh, in the advert that you see, oh wow, that is a hot pan. Uh, what they show is this skin thing, skin side down, just literally spinning around the pan, not sticking at all. Uh, so let's see how this goes. Also, I'm gonna have a really weird lunch of hot dogs, salmon, eggs, green beans, and Nutella. I've had worse. So we're just gonna cook it up. I'm gonna see. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, that is cool. I guess it is skin side down though, so it is always quite slithery anyway. So it's like skin on skin action. But look, they were properly doing this. You know, I'm starting to like this pan now. It might have been that it was the first cook, you know, with that fried egg. Even though I gave it a wash, it might have been like, no, you have to use me to get the most out of me. I'm not sure that the pan talks like that, but you get what I mean. But look, that's awesome. Look at that, I'm proper going for that. Wah, 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 wah. Cooking without any oil. I've actually got a really good color on that skin as well. Oh no, got caught on the top bit there. Okay, so this isn't any good, this bit up here. But then in the pan, all right. You have my attention now, Pan. Very, very cool. Wow, look at that. And again, yeah, this slides around as well. Nice. Mmm, hot dog, egg, and fish. <laughs> Another thing on that video was actually uh, ketchup. I don't have any of that, I have barbecue sauce. Look. They say now it won't stick to the pan. Okay, kind of isn't, to be fair. That's, it's moving a little bit. Like in the video, it was much better than that. Uh, hmm. Nice, see, in the video, it all poured out. It ain't coming out. Kind of wish I didn't do that. Bizarrely, one of the last tests they did, they put a plastic cup in this pan to show that it just slid out. Now that's gonna smell and also potentially set off my smoke alarm. So I'm gonna open my door now and then we'll just see if we can do that. Weirdest thing I've ever done. Just waiting for my cup to cook. Starting to go. Where's it going? <laughs> Where's it going? I don't like that. That was so weird. It shrunk down to this. <laughs> Look at that. Why would you even do that? Why? It stinks. And it is a non-stick on that. Look, but don't ever put a plastic cup in. There's no need. Why even put that in the marketing video? I like this look. Yeah, don't do this. But this hot dog has cooked a charm. I've like, spread it with my caramelized barbecue sauce. Mm. Mm. I don't feel like eating the fish though. There's a time and a place. Sometimes my dad jokes off the scale. God, you believe it. Anyhow, uh, that is another kitchen gadget testing video done and in the bag, the kitchen gadget sack. Go have a barathon, watch the rest of them. Let me know down below any cool gadgets you've seen. Send me links and I'll get hold of them. Or if you want to send me some, that's cool. Don't forget to subscribe for regular recipes and food fun. Follow me on social media for behind the scenes bits and bobs. And I'll see you next time. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the sapoon was probably my favorite, like proper wax on, wax off going on. Mm.